Thank you for turning in to another Common Man Adventure video blog. This one I'm calling The Diner Scene. It's funny. I know significant things happened in that diner, but what I remember most is that weird old character, and because of him, how that place could actually have had any business. I certainly would not have taken any of my dates to a place like that. That diner and that weird old character had an impact on me back in 1967. It's from a movie made in my hometown called In the Heat of the Night. Sparta, Illinois is that hometown. It not only made an impact on me, but there's a, that movie made impact on a lot of people, both locally, nationally, and internationally, that racially charged movie. Uh, I and many people from my hometown have lots of memories about that movie. If, of course we would. It was made in, in my hometown. In the previous blog, I talked about uh, a behind-the-scenes things that happened uh, in, uh, I called it the dead body scene. So uh, this one is about another piece of history behind something that happened in that very same movie. This one's about that diner scene. That's why I introduced it that way. But this was not a location that was uh, shot here in Sparta. It was shot in a town, small town, about, oh, 30 miles from us, a little town called Freeburg, Illinois. They used one of their local restaurants um, to film this particular scene. Uh, that restaurant, that building, by the way, has long since disappeared. But for some reason, they, the character in there, his name was Ralph, he was a late night waiter. Um, the song that he played on the jukebox and the way that he turned it on, that is one of the things that, or several of the things that I remember about that movie. Uh, just kind of weird. For such an important movie as this, In the Heat of the Night, it's kind of funny, I know, to have a memory like that, but I can't help it. Ralph, that character, that waiter character, he just plain creeped me out. Anthony James, who played that character, obviously did it very well. He got the desired effect from me, I know, and from other people. In fact, James made a living out of playing creepy, sleazy, oily villains in both film and movies. And he certainly looked the part. He was tall, lanky, he had a pockmarked face and a stringy build, and of course that greasy dark hair. As soon as he appeared on camera, you knew something ominous was going to happen around him. And apparently Hollywood thought he was good at it, too. He appeared in two Best Picture Academy Award-winning movies throughout his career. 
in the heat of the night, his very first major movie role was the first one. And the last one he made in 1992 was also an Academy Award winning Best Picture. And in that movie, he played Skinny Dubois, the mean owner of the sleazy bordello in Clint Eastwood's Unforgiven. But the other thing that kind of struck me is about that uh, diner scene was the song called Foul Owl on the Prowl. Uh, when the audience first heard that song in the movie, a murder had been committed. The investigation into it had begun. A couple of people had already been accused of committing the murder. And one of them was the town's deputy. Uh, apparently he had frequented the diner whenever he was on night duty, crawling or, or cruising around the town. And that, of course, is why uh, a visit to the diner was necessary. Uh, the thing that I remember about it was before you saw Ralph, you saw this hand with, with a knife in it jimmying a jukebox, and he had the dinner knife in his hand. The camera pans up to this bobbing face of a sleazy looking guy and he selects the song Foul Owl on the Prowl. That sleazy guy with a dirty apron begins a goofy dance. While, while he's dancing, he, he hears a commotion outside the window of the restaurant, and he looks out and he sees a police car. And Ralph, at that point, becomes an immediate suspect. The song was appropriate. To me, Ralph was a foul owl on the prowl. Do you know the history behind that song? It's kind of interesting. The diner scene was originally shot using Sam the Sham and the Pharaoh's song, Little Red Riding Hood. Uh, that was a hit at the time. Everybody was listening to it. <clears throat> but the song had to be scrapped because the artist wanted more money than the producers were willing to pay to use the song in the movie. So they went to a Quincy Jones and asked him to write a new one. And of course, he did. He, as soon as he was asked, he wrote a new song for it right there on the spot with lyrics and a beat to match the existing footage and the intent of the scene. The song, of course, was an ode to a big, bad Predator. It was a funny and innocent sounding song played in such a serious movie. It was that innocence and the image of that dancing small town weirdo that strongly suggested something was going to follow. And even I at the time could see it. All of us in Sparta knew some of the residents were extras in the movie, and I had recognized several. At the time, for some reason, I thought that Ralph reminded me of someone that I thought was a resident of the movie. And I wondered why he was able to secure a speaking part. Um, in 1968, the movie was made in my hometown. Uh, that movie, of course, was nominated for an Oscar for Best Picture. It won it, and it beat out other great movies of the time, movies like that were nominated like The Graduate, Bonnie and Clyde, and Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. It was, and still is, a great movie. I wrote some more about this particular scene, the diner scene and the dead body scene on my written blog. Go check it out when you get a chance. That's all for now. I will do this again.